Yeah, we had our opportunities. We didn't take advantage of them in the red zone. There were a couple, you know, obviously when you lose a game like that, you you fixate on the opportunities that you didn't hit. Uh, we hit plenty of them. You know, I thought we found a good rhythm on offense. We just, you know, when we get in the red zone, we got to punch it in and can't turn them all over. Was there anything that you did throughout the week that kind of made you feel more comfortable and made you feel as good as you did in that game maybe as opposed to week one? Mm. No, I'm, I treat every week the same. Uh, just uh, another week under my belt, so I'm going to continue to get better. I felt felt good on, on Sunday, uh, planning on feeling great on Monday. Have you allowed yourself to think how good this offense can be with the full complement of weapons that it takes back this week? We have, we know what we can be. It's It's about what we are right now, and it's about getting better every day. So, you know, we know what we have in that locker room. We know where we can go. We just have to go do it. Guys enter a situation that's eerily similar to last year, Monday Night Football, 0-2 in a, in a must-win game. How frustrating is it that, that if you find it frustrating that that is the same thing a year later? Mm, I wouldn't say I'm frustrated right now. You know, I was frustrated on Sunday. That was a tough loss, but uh, we just got to go out and get a win. We got to focus on, on getting better every day throughout practice. Uh, and go out and execute when we have to execute on, on Monday. Um, the rest will take care of itself. So, you know, we're we're in a fine spot. You know, we've been here before. We're not panicking. So we're uh, we're focused on on getting a win and, and getting better every day. How would you describe the sense of urgency going into this game? That's high. You know, we we're treating that, we treat every practice like it's the same. You know, we're we pride ourselves on us. You're not being able to tell if we win or lose at practice. We're uh, we're going to go out and, and have fun and get our work in uh, and get better. So we we had a good day today. We've had you know a bunch of good meetings since Sunday. So uh, we're excited. What do the uh, what does the tight end usage of the twelve? How does that affect you? How does it help you? Yeah, it definitely makes the defenses. Uh, you know, a lot of teams have different looks in, in 12 personnel than they do in, in 11. Uh, and week to week, that could vary. The usage of tw 12 could vary week to week, depending on matchups and what we feel like the defense is going to give us in those situations. Uh, and we have the guys to, to make that decision this year. You know, we have a lot of tight ends that we feel really good about putting them on the field and going to make them plays. So uh, that's a, a luxury that we have this year. What is it about Eric Hall's game that you appreciate the most, and how has he been able to pick it up so quick? Yeah, he just gets better. He does nothing but work hard and, and improve and learn from his mistakes and uh, continue to get better every day. That's what you want out of a young player. He's got all the physical tools. You know, he's big, fast, strong, catches it really well, um, and he's continuing to understand what we're trying to, to do with concept and scheme. So uh, I'm, I'm excited about his future. How unique is that for a rookie, too? Uh, Zach described it as you guys, just, you know, the coaches keep putting stuff on his plate, and he just does his able to absorb it. How, how unique is that for a rookie to do? I would say that's very unique, and we have we have two guys on offense that are are continuing to get really a lot better for us in Eric and Jermaine, uh, and then you know whenever Mims comes back, see him on the field some. So we have some rookies that we're counting on this year that. Um, have made some big plays for us so far and are going to continue to get better and, and find their role. How has Jermaine shown that over the past few weeks? Yeah, he's, he's gotten exponentially better over the last three weeks, I would say. You saw him make a big play on Sunday for us. He's going to continue to carve out his role, um, and he continues to have good practices. So the more he does that and the more he learns, the more you're going to see him. How long ago does that last win that you were on the field for feel like? Yeah, it feels like a long time ago. Uh, we just got to go out and get another one. How, how, what's this like? What's the stretch been like for you? It's probably the most unique one over your entire life. How have you kind of managed that, um, like that stretch from the end of last year through this year to now? I mean, what's that been like as a quarterback who's used to winning so much? Yeah, it's been a, you know, tough six to eight months. Uh, in a, a frustrating couple of weeks, an emotional couple of weeks. Uh, emotional week one because I was just excited to get back out there, and emotional week two because I was a hard fought 
tough battle that we didn't come out on top, didn't quite make enough plays to win. So uh, we're uh, we're just excited to be back out there, excited for the opportunity on Monday. What's it like Monday night when the lights come on and it's Monday night football and you're out there? That's what that's what you live for. You know, when you're a kid, you watch Monday night football, falling asleep before school. Um, so I'm excited to to be the guy on the TV with that kid watching. So that's always an opportunity that I, I relish. Jane Daniels off to a really nice start. They really moved the ball well the first couple of weeks. When you watched him last year a little bit, anything stand out that really caught your eye in his play? He's a dynamic player. I really like his throwing motion. Seems like he can spin it and understands his fundamentals. Uh, I think he's got a bright future. You know, obviously he's really fast and quick and dynamic, but um, not sure he gets enough credit for the passer that he is, and he's going to, just going to continue to learn and continue to improve. What kind of work relationship do y'all have with Yeah, we have a good one. You know, I see him. I saw him when I would go back, and I've seen him uh, a couple times since. So whenever we see each other, we we have a good talk. What was you give, you give me the advice on kind of having to follow your footsteps at LSU specifically? Have you know? No, not really. Joe T. Jenkins uh, has had a rough couple of weeks not being able to play. Zach said he's trending in the right way. He's practicing again. How much have you been wanting just to see him get back on the field for this offense to be as dynamic as it can be? Yeah, we're obviously a better team with, with T out there. So uh, he's going to continue to to get healthier and healthier. So hopefully we have him on Sunday. Um, if we don't, we still feel confident in the guys that we have. But uh, we're obviously more dynamic and a uh, much better team with T out there. Can you give us a quick scouting report on the commander's defense and what they do well? Their front is really good. They are very disruptive. Their two interior players are big, strong, athletic guys that you really have to, to game plan for. Uh, their linebackers are, are smart veteran players that understand what you're trying to do. So. Um, they get in and out of the right checks depending on what you're doing at the line of scrimmage. Uh, so those, that's the, the strength of their team. Uh, their outside guys are they're going to make it tough. They're going to play physical. Uh, so we're going to have to match that challenge. Yeah, Jayden had a very similar transfer in uh, coming into a program with a lot of high expectations. At a program like in the SEC where there's a lot of high expectations, it's the hardest part of coming in and being a quarterback who eventually excels and has that expectation that he need to go out and play at that kind of level. Mm, it's tough to say. I mean, when you're in it, you're just thinking about what you have to do day to day to, to put yourself in the best position to go out and play well. You're not really focused on the pressure from the fans or the pressure from outside external sources. Uh, the best players put the most pressure on themselves to go out and perform. So uh, that's really what I was worried about the most. Before getting to the NFL, were you ever 0-2? Was the team you were on ever 0-2? No. You said a couple times, patience, relax, and, and you've been calm in these moments. When did you learn When did you learn that? Because it obviously had to be in the past five years at some point. When you're a rookie and you're whatever we were, two and – Eight before I got hurt, you know, you learn how to, to handle those situations and just focus on controlling what you can control and getting better every week. Uh, and so that's what I try to do every day, just go out and improve, and uh, the rest of the team is going to do the same, and the rest will take care of itself. If you talk tie, you forgot the tie. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I didn't know how to feel about that one. <laughs> you, you guys are unbeaten. Uh, on a Ring of Honor night when they're in here, and Zach talks about trying to make you guys aware of the tradition. What kind of factor is there when you come in here on that night? Do you have any interplay with these guys? Do you know who these guys are? Yeah, whenever you, you know, honor the legends of the organization, I always think that's a, a big night for them and their families, and then uh, us understanding the history of the game, I think, plays a big part in the NFL and paying homage to the guys that came before you because without them, we wouldn't be in the position making the money that we're making and uh, having the platform that we have. Do you think you're a tougher team now offensively? Do you think you're a tougher offensive unit than you have been in the last couple of years? I think it's early, too early to tell. Uh, I think we have the chance to be. I think we have the the variation in in weapons to 
pound the rock and then play action and hit you over the top and then as well as spread you out and get our playmakers the ball. So uh, I think we can, you know, you got a taste of that on Sunday. I think we, the way we handled that game was uh, who we are going forward. You said it was one of the most frustrating losses in your memory. How do you go about pushing that into the past and moving on as quickly as you have to in the NFL, even though it is a one day longer of a week for you? Yeah, that's, I'm past it. Uh, that's all you can do. You move on to the next day, watch the tape, and then you're back to your routine of uh, getting healthy, getting your body right, and trying to get better throughout practice. So that's behind us. We lost is what it is. We're 0-2. That's where we're at. Uh, we're excited about the opportunity on Monday. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Clapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.